Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Campus Safety Voices. I'm Robin Hattersley, Editor-in-Chief of Campus Safety. Although school, university, and hospital security officers often patrol their campuses on foot, many of them also need patrol vehicles so they can most effectively protect their facilities and the surrounding areas. Unfortunately, patrol vehicles can be very expensive not only to purchase, but also to maintain. So how can a campus security department provide its employees with the patrol vehicles they need to do their jobs while keeping costs under control? To find out, I spoke with LaVon Smart, who is the Executive Director of Security and Disaster Preparedness for the Palm Springs Unified School District in Palm Springs, California. LaVon, who is also one of this year's Director of the Year finalists, was able to buy a new fleet of patrol vehicles while saving his district more than $200,000. Those savings were reallocated to other areas that needed more resources, such as officer training. In our interview, LaVon discusses the process he went through to, ident to identify the right vehicles for his department. He also offers some advice to other campus security directors on effectively managing campus patrol vehicles. So with that, here's my interview with LaVon Smart. Enjoy the show. Be sure to subscribe to Campus Safety's YouTube channel and like or leave a comment on our videos. Or subscribe to our Campus Safety Voices podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. So, LaVon, you were able to lease a fleet of patrol vehicles that are more environmentally friendly, saving your district more than $80,000. What was the condition of your patrol vehicles or fleet before getting the new vehicles and why did they need to be replaced? So in order to answer that question, I'd have to give you a little bit of context. So literally three, three years ago, March of 2020 is when I came here, March 2nd to be exact. March 13th, we shut down. So um, during that time, I got a chance to basically look over the entire, you know, after taking the job, like, okay, what do I have? So as we were doing, as uh, COVID was going on and we still had patrols going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, noticed it started noticing and getting calls from the mechanics that we, our vehicles kept dropping off. Come to find out our vehicles were really high performance vehicles. Our older, our vehicles that we used to have were the police interceptor Ford Explorers with the entire police package which we really don't need our security officer driving 148 miles an hour on the highway or anywhere around. <laughs> um, so talking with the, the, the mechanics, they were, they were like, you know what, you guys could probably serve yourselves better by getting a car that's not as much maintenance. So that was kind of the, the impetus that we started thinking of right off the bat. So then as we started looking at them and they were all over 100,000 miles plus, then of course, just wear and tear few accidents, so you know what, we might want to start looking at a new fleet that's going to be more in line with what we're trying to do as an organization. So that's really how it started. Um, once we started looking at what we paid for those vehicles, it was roughly 80 grand per vehicle for these outfitted Ford Explorers. We then started looking at that and we're trying to figure out, is this what we really need to do? because our, our funding is through the local uh, control uh, and accountability plan, where we have to make sure that we're using the money to make sure to uh, supply or make, make those improvements for the kids, right? It's, it's for students, it's, it's not for, it's, so it's how can we Im increase or improve services to students? So we had to look at that as well. So the first piece was just the wear and tear. Is it something that we truly needed? Second was, what are the organizational goals and objectives? We have to be in line with that. If not, we'll fall on our face and we'll, we won't be successful. Then three, what was our funding? What cost benefit analysis? How is it, what can we do to better increase and improve the services for students? So those were the three things that we really used when we started looking for. So what were the vehicles you actually chose and why did you decide on those model, models? So this is kind of a funny story as well. So as we uh, started looking, we said, you know what, we will go with the Ford Edge. At that time, Enterprise says, well, we don't have any, but we do have the Ford, I, I can see it in my, I'm going to draw a blank right now, the, not the Edge, it is the Ford, because uh, we wound up purchasing one, but 
I'll, a different I'll, model. I'll, yeah, a different model. <laughs> um, then it wound up that those models were no longer, we weren't able to get those. So we wound up with the Chevy Equinox. The Equinox actually fits us better because it's a little larger than the vehicle I could not remember that Ford has. <laughs> um, so some of our, our larger officers, they were, they were more, it was more accommodating to them. So they were happy that we did that. It's also a four cylinder, even though we're not going to be, our vehicles won't be maintained. The maintenance won't be done by the district and we'll take it back to wherever the lease, the, uh, where enterprise wants some service. That was a plus because it also reduced our fixed costs, that variable, that, that variable cost, because now we've transferred that, that over to the leasing company. So we didn't have to worry about that. So that was one of the big things as well. It reduced that that overall cost of the vehicles. Now you mentioned Enterprise. Are you talking about Enterprise Rent-A-Car? Yes, Enterprise Leasing Company. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. And and most people know, know them. They're the largest leasing company, and I think they said in the world at one point. But they do their commercial vehicles, and that's what we did. We're, what we're trying to do as an organization is redo our entire white fleet, which of course is exactly the way it sounds. It's all of our vehicles that are white. Are, so we're leasing them because what we want to do moving forward, I believe it's 2025, we have an administrative regulation where we want to be uh, electric, all electric fleet. So this allows us with this new lease with our vehicles, it allows us to make sure in the next three years when we have that buyout option or the, the option to trade in, we can start looking at that electric vehicle because now our infrastructure will be big will be built and more robust and allow us to then be part of that. So now transitioning to, to um, electric. So are you, you guys are in the process of building out that infrastructure with the district? Is that what I understand? Yes. So our uh, fa facilities are currently working. We were, I want to say Edison. I'm, I'm from the Midwest. So I'm trying to get all the, the, the electric companies uh, correct here, but I believe it's Edison right now. We do have a few, uh, charging stations throughout the district that we use mainly for consumers, not so much our own vehicles, but just for consumers who are out and about for the general public out and about on some of our campuses where they can charge those vehicles. So we will be building it on our on other property where we have it that it's solely for us. And then other times when we're not using it, the public can then use it. So yes, we're starting to build that infrastructure. Okay, so how does the performance or maintenance of your new vehicles compare to your previous ones? Obviously, they don't have 100,000 miles on them, so they probably are running, running a lot better, right? Yes. So the, the performance, and I, I said it earlier, like the performance vehicle we had prior to was a high-end performance vehicle. Realistically, just full disclosure, that's not who we are. That's not what we do. We're not getting ready to get, in, get into a car pursuit. These are things that we're just not going to do. So we had... We had more uh, vehicle than we needed. So we scaled back on that vehicle on it that way. It's more conducive to the duties and responsibilities we have, <clears throat> excuse me, as they drive from school to school or call to call. And it's also less on the, the, the environment. It's only a four cylinder versus the six cylinder turbo. <laughs> And all those other things. And then, as, as I said earlier, the maintenance, we've transferred that responsibility to the leasing company's uh, garage, wherever we take those. Now, just so I understand, you're a non-sworn agency. You're not a law enforcement agency, correct? Correct. Okay, so that's the reason why you, they don't need some high-performance law enforcement vehicle that's designed for the traditional police department or, or sheriff's department or things like that, correct? Yes, ma'am, correct. We, we, we are a proprietary uh, entity, but we're, we, are a safe, we say we're safety personnel more than anything. No, we are not a sworn law enforcement agency. Um, I don't believe that that's the, the way the organization intended it or moving forward, it would be that way either. Okay, so in what specific ways have your new vehicles saved your district so much money? Um, less maintenance, fuel costs, anything else? So I, less maintenance, definitely the money, especially. Um, I guess we, if we were looking at it, we were running at about 480,000 for the vehicles we had prior to. We've now cut that down to roughly about 250,000. We were able to purchase nine vehicles. So those nine vehicles are six patrol, let me break this out correctly, seven patrol vehicles, one vehicle for supervisors, and then one vehicle for myself. 
So those in those two vehicles, the supervisor vehicle and my vehicle, those are vehicles that are then outfitted for all those different things, disaster preparedness pieces that we may need. That's how those vehicles will be outfitted. The other ones are outfitted where a typical security vehicle, you have amber lights and markings. So you're, you have that high visibility depending on where, where it is you want to use that vehicle at that time. But that was our biggest thing, reducing that total cost and then being able to shift that money that we saved, which is roughly about 200000 that we were able to save into things like training. So we can improve those services so we can get that youth mental health first aid training, the, the different training about threat assessments and all those other pieces for both our safety staff and our school resource officers. So what I said in the beginning actually was wrong. You've saved way more than eighty thousand dollars. You saved yes, ma'am, over two hundred thousand dollars. That's amazing. Yes. yes. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Well, any advice uh, you'd like to give to other campus protection executives on patrol fleet, fleet management? Um, what would you do differently? What would you? What are you most proud of? You, you know. I wouldn't, I don't know if there's any advice I can give them because I'm sure they know their organization and they know or, organizational needs. And that's where I would always hang my hat on what's good for the organization. Um, I would say for me, the one thing I'm proud of is that we did reduce so much money and it was a, we were able to then funnel it into those other pieces, uh, training, mainly because you'll never rise to the level of occasion, you'll always fall to your level of training. So now we get a chance to give them a more robust training for our officers. But then if I had it to do all over again, I would start earlier in the process because there are a lot of different pieces and a lot of different people that touch you know, the, the entire process of leasing the vehicles. And sometimes unbeknownst to you, it may be something else that happens but at that same time, the, as the world turns, so to speak, things keep going. Those vehicles wind up breaking down and the new ones aren't coming in. So I would start earlier if it was me, if I had to do it again. LaVon, thank you so much. Anything else you'd like to add? Or any no, same advice? I, I, I am happy. I'm, I'm humbled by this entire experience. Mm -hmm. I, I thank you for it. I, I am completely humbled. Um, at any point in time, if anybody needs to reach out to me, by all means, please do so. And we can share stories and, and share and collaborate on the best practices to keep students and staff safe. LaVon, thank you so much. Thank you.